So what's up guys, a little different video today. This is just gonna be a quick interview with Lou, Glenn, and Jason, kind of about how they got into pits and that sort of thing. And I'm also gonna include my favorite part of the interviews, which is the lightning round questions. So if you wanna check out more of this content, guys, check out this week's coming up Zoom, Thursday, September 24th at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right, we're gonna have a live meeting all about advancing husbandry in the hobby. So I definitely think you wanna check that one out. Guys, see you then. Welcome, so I'll, I'll introduce you guys first. I have Glenn Brooks with Glenn Reptiles. Uh, he's a breeder out here in California. Lou Boyer, uh, who is has a YouTube channel, Lou B747 on YouTube. Um, he has a lot of great videos on herpin all over the world, which is really fun. Uh, Jason Nelson, um, pretty prolific breeder with Envy Reptiles. So welcome, gentlemen. How's everyone today? Doing great. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Good. Good, good. So we'll we'll kick this off and we'll get started right away. So starting with Glenn, but then we'll just go in a circle. So you guys all ask me uh, or answer the same question. Tell me a little bit about yourself. What do you keep? What's your experience with reptiles? Then once once we get all that out of the way, why go for snakes or bull snakes? Like, uh, what why do you keep these? Are they your favorite? Do you, are you drawn to them more than others? Why do you look for them? Any of that stuff, right? So, Glenn, let me know a little bit about yourself. Uh, you want me to include that last answer after the first ones? Yeah. Okay. Whatever order you like. Um, I uh, I kind of came into uh, keeping reptiles from the pet side of it, not from field collecting, not from biology. <laughs> Um, just kind of, I had a bunch of different pets I always liked and snakes just became a fun pet that was easy to care for, fun to breed and a lot of interesting things with genetics, with breeding them. And, you know, they only eat once in a while and they only poop once in a while. So much lower maintenance and fun to deal with. So that's kind of how I got into it. I've learned a lot about them from that point. Yeah. Um, and uh, I keep a pretty wide variety of things. I, I tend to not keep many of anything um, simply because uh, I, I like having different animals with different kind of requirements and just kind of different personalities and different looks. So I've got some boas and some pythons and uh, quite a variety of colubrids, um, but probably two of my biggest um, collections are uh, San Diego gopher snakes and bull snakes. All of my, almost all of my stock uh, San Diego gopher snakes come from uh, Jason uh, from Envy Reptiles. I originally got some from him and started breeding them. And then I did get a pair from uh, someone else that I also integrated into my stock. But I've had people ask me about um, what is how do you get a, a great snake? You know, I'll, I'll, I'll have a baby snake and I'll be excited about it. It's the best one I produced all year. I take pictures of it and everybody says, I want that snake. I'm like, well, you're not going to get that snake. The way you get that snake is by two of these clutch mates that aren't as nice as that snake and breed them together till you get a snake like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, you know, most of my breeding stock are now animals I produced that I then held back so that I have really high quality animals. Uh, I try to start with high quality animals and then hold back animals because you can produce, I think, better animals than you can buy. And so um, I've really enjoyed the uh, bulls and gophers. Uh, I, I really like San Diego gophers. They're a great animal. Um, I like the variety and morphs. I like the attitude. Um, one of the things that um, gophers and bulls are known for is having a bad attitude but I think the other thing they're known for is having a good attitude mm. and by that I mean they're super threatening but usually they're super mellow um, and so they hiss at you and they'll sometimes make a, a fuss but you pick them up and they're the most calm snake in your collection and so it's it's kind of a fun combination in a snake to have. And, and we'll, uh, I want to talk more about that later, too, so I'm glad you brought that up. Thanks, Glenn. Lou, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, how you guys doing? Uh, I'm an airline pilot that travels the world and looks for snakes, I guess. Uh, crazy snake hobby. I always liked snakes when I was a kid. 
I, I have a few pet snakes. I don't actually have any gopher snakes this time, but uh, I don't keep a lot of snakes. I just like to go out and find them. I don't know if that, uh, you know, nothing against keeping them. Like I said, I have a few snakes. I just, I like finding things. I don't know. So, you know, living in Southern California, there's a lot of gopher snakes around here this year. I think I've found probably 25 or, or 30. It's been a big year as far as gopher snakes go. And then I've traveled to Illinois and I've found some of the bull snakes out there. And uh, yeah, that's my passion, just finding, finding stuff out in the wild. And then the YouTube thing kind of sort of took off a little. And I just, I feel lucky to go where I go. So I've sort of made it my goal to try and capture the passion or share the experience with as many people that want to watch, whether that's one person that's all you know stoked and excited to see it. Or, or a million people on a video with the King Cobra or something, you know, then so be it. But just to share it with one person is kind of my thing. So I try and make a video that's watchable that people, you know, feel like they're there, I guess. So that's, that's me in a nutshell, I guess. No, that's terrific. And for those that don't, that haven't seen Lou's channel, Lou B747, it's really a fun channel. Uh, you have a great perspective uh, when you're out in the field. You know, there's, there's a lot of guys. I could recommend a lot of uh, YouTube channels and, and I watch a lot of them, but uh, you get, it's, uh, you're, you're very, very watchable. So anyone watching this video on YouTube needs to, uh, to subscribe to you as well. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very entertaining. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is, you know, credit to you for being uh, naturally entertaining. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jason, tell us a little bit about yourself. I've always been in reptiles as long as I can remember. A lot of people think of me as a morph guy, which, yeah, I am, but I really am passionate about herping, going, I take several trips a year. I go to Mexico usually once a year to do herping. Just, I, I love the animals. I love seeing them in their natural habitat. And I've always, since... I got into this hobby of breeding snakes in 96 is about when I got into starting to keep and breed snakes. And uh, from day one, I wanted to always create something new. And so I'm always on the mood. I'm always got projects. Um, almost every year I'll produce something brand new that's not been existent yet in a morph. So yeah, that's, that's kind of, what I do and what I like and. Awesome, what is it that, uh, that's drawn you to, to get into bull snakes and gopher snakes? Originally, I was a king, king and milk snake guy. Right. And um, a good friend of mine, Rick Blair, a mentor of mine, um, I'd buy a lot of stuff off him. And one day he just had some albino sonorans kicking around and I thought, oh, I'll try them out. Those are pretty cool. And I got addicted right away. There's something about pits that, I mean, they're bulletproof. It's hard to kill, you know, <laughs> kill a bull snake or a gopher snake. They just want to eat. And they're, and I like what Glenn said about, yeah, they're kind of threatening and that, but they really are, most of mine are just sweethearts, gentle giants. You always get one or two that's a firecracker, but my king snakes will attack me way more than my, my gopher snakes and pit and my bulls and stuff. So I agree with Glenn a lot on that. Uh, so, you know, if I want to quit my job, Jason, and become a professional breeder, how do I do that? <laughs> you better have a lot of time and a lot of space. And <laughs> I, I mean, I, I run a pretty good size collection. There's no way I'm quitting my job <laughs> to do this yeah. full time. I, I don't know how long this market's going to last. I mean, right now it's at, it's better than it's ever been for pits. It's crazy. Prices have gone all overnight. They've just all of a sudden doubled and it's crazy right now. And there's the demand. A lot of those price increases is because supply and demand. There's just not enough animals to go around for the hobbyist. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, if you want to try it, make a living at it, I guess, yeah, you could. I, 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 I run a pretty good sized pit collection. I'm not quitting my job. I know that. How'd and I don't even, and I don't love my job. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> how did you get, how did you get started breeding snakes? 
Well, what was the process like for you? So if someone, say for instance, I um, said, hey, you know, my goal is to be this uh, prolific breeder of, of morphs um, and tell me how you got started. What would you say? Gosh, I got started because I just wanted a few snakes. I got a gray band, a king, uh, Arizona mountain king. And eventually I, and, and this is pre-internet days. I didn't know that. I didn't know how huge, I didn't know, heck, I thought I was one of the few people that liked snakes. <laughs> you know, mm. it, um, but it turns out there's a lot of people. I I kind of stumbled into it, really. Uh, met a few people, and like Rick Blair was a, like I mentioned him before, he was, he was a big breeder at the time, and he lived five miles down the road from me, so I kind of learned a lot from him. And kind of went there that way. And then just, I always put my own twist on things. Do my, like, I, you read books and it's like, you have, especially back then you would read books and you're like, oh, you have to do it this way. Yeah. It turns out there's a lot of different ways to do this. And there's, and not all those ways in those books were exactly accurate either. So you learn a lot over time. I've learned a ton. If that's a, a legitimate question, that this idea of, you know, I want to quit my job. Um, uh, step number one is don't. That's the first answer. <laughs> um, unless you want to really hate keeping snakes. Um, because like everything, you know, as soon as it, as soon as you have to do it, it's not that fun. Um, but uh, I really do think there is a prescription that would increase your likelihood of being successful at, on the income end of it. But you have to sacrifice certain things you love. Like there are animals I keep that aren't worth much, but I love them and I enjoy right. them. Um, if I was just doing this to make money, I need to get rid of those animals because they are w a wasted resource. And so my advice would be, number one, plan on quitting your job in 10 years. And number two, take about $10,000 and buy expensive snakes that breed easily. And then every year, get more. Um, and uh, you can find expensive snakes that breed reasonably easily. Um, and you will get more money out of it than you put into it. Assuming you don't lose them, assuming you don't have a catastrophe, assuming you don't happen to buy one that has a genetic defect, um, uh, but just building your collection. That's what I bought a couple of snakes and bred them and then took the babies and traded for a couple of more and traded those babies and I've done that for 20 years now, and I've got lots of stuff now. Um, but I remember when I bought my first snake that cost over $100, mm -hmm. $125, and I bought two of them, and I thought my wife was going to leave me. <laughs> you didn't tell her, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I, was, I lived in fear that she might find out that I had recklessly spent $250 on a pair of snakes. Um, I'm at a place now, and I've got a pretty big collection, where if I'm only selling a snake for about $100, it's not one that's very profitable for me. Right. Um, because it costs the same amount of money, essentially, to feed a $100 snake as a $2,000 snake. Um, and the, there are other factors like sizes of um, clutches. Uh, you know, um, some animals produce small clutches, only breed every other year. Some animals are bigger, so it costs more to feed them. If you start, you, you have to basically treat this like it's, uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, some sort of cattle industry, you know, and the, look at the snake as a value and what you put into it and what you get out of it. Um, right. You guys have time for a question for both of you guys uh, uh, real quick, Glenn and uh, sure. Jason? Uh, I, I read snakes. I have a, just a couple snakes, but like, 
obviously it's expensive to feed snakes. Now maybe you get a deal on all the mice and all that, but like, do you try and sell the baby snakes like ASAP so you don't have to feed them for all the, is that, is that the goal? Is that, okay. Yeah, and less work. You gotta have, yeah, you it's not the money. It's not the money. It's you the want time. to simplify your work, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, you know, it is expensive. I have a, I have a six thousand dollar rodent bill sitting in, oh. on my shoulders right now, and yeah. How long it, does that last you? That's that's a good chunk of the year, obviously. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's luckily I have a rodent guy that's a good friend of mine, so <laughs> he he helps me out tremendously so i'm lucky yeah. that way those of us that agree a lot either are the rodent guy or have a rodent guy. <laughs> yeah, I've, d I've done both <laughs> <laughs> thankfully i have a rodent guy also uh, that's see. a whole new responsibility and job i would Looking imagine the rodents. the rodents are way more work than the snakes <laughs> yeah. uh, so it this point, I'm gonna do like some lightning round questions. So just real quick, basic. Uh, I don't have a lot for you guys. So we'll start with you, Lou. Favorite place on the planet to herp? Ooh, <laughs> that's a tough one. Um, well, it's a lightning round, so you gotta be quick with it. <laughs> uh, I, I like Singapore of all places. Okay. They have real cool blue coral snakes. <laughs> Thank you. Glenn, what's your favorite plant? Uh. Aloe vera. Okay. Neat. Jason, if you could only keep one, uh, I'll say herp, not just reptiles. You could do amphibians and even spiders. One species, what would it be? Um, probably great basin gophers. Cool. Good answer, because this is the gopher and bull snake talk. So, Lou, are you afraid of spiders? <laughs> Someone's been watching my videos. I, I, I'm not afraid of spiders. I just don't like them on me, especially like my face. That's fair. Uh, Glenn, dogs or cats? Dogs. Dogs. All right. Fair answer. Uh, and Jason, do you uh, support alternative theories to the moon landing? No. <laughs> that is the correct nope. answer. All righty. Thank you. Steven, lightning round. Earth, flat or sphere? Sphere. Okay. Uh -oh. I'm a pilot, so you can't ask me that one. <laughs> <laughs> so you've seen the edge. I've, I've seen the I've been over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just mountains. You can't fly over those mountains. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, good Lord. Uh, well, thank you, everyone, for attending. And, and thank you, Glenn and Lou and Jason. And um, Jason, I don't know. You don't have a YouTube, do you, Jason? I don't. That's OK. Hey, it's, um, <laughs> you're better off without it, I think. I, well, I wanted to start one. And I kind of I'm, I wanted to base it off of just it was kind of more I want to document what the work I'm doing. And now everybody's going to know my idea, but um, I just want to, I just, I did take a video and pictures of 90, well, probably 70% of my eggs hatching. And I just kind of wanted to make a little YouTube ep episode that way, um, just to kind of document some of the stuff I'm doing. But that's about as far as I thought so far. <laughs> if nothing else, for the people that buy your snakes so that they could go see it. Um, and I know I, I, I subscribe to, to Glenn Reptiles on YouTube too. So if you're, if you're looking for some hatchlings, he's got them on there. And I subscribe to LuB747 for some really fun herping videos. And uh, we're Herp Panel Forums. So you guys, thank you very much. Pleasure having you guys on. You guys were really fantastic. So thank you all. And um, hopefully we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. All right. Okay. See you. Bye. Bye.